In the heart of fashion capitals around the world, there's a space where avant-garde fashion, art, and design collide. The story of Comme des Garçons all starts with Ray Kawakubo, a self-taught Japanese fashion designer who took a clothing brand once deemed too weird for runway and transformed it into a global powerhouse. The story of CDG spans several decades as it twists and turns down a long genre-bending pathway. In this exploration, we journey through the history of Comme des Garçons, a brand that challenges traditional norms and celebrates creativity. But how exactly did it all get started though? How did a small town Japanese girl rise to the ranks of design so high that she would arguably be called the grandmother of fashion? Let's find out. I'm Nate the Great from TakeFlight214.com and this is the history of Ray Kawakubo and Comme des Garçons. This video is brought to you by us here at TakeFlight214.com but more on us at the end of the video. As for now, don't forget to hit that like button for us and let's get started with the story. The journey of Ray Kawakubo began in 1964 Japan. This is when a young Ray graduated from Keio University in Tokyo with a degree in fine arts and aesthetic. After college, she took a position at an advertising department for an acrylic fiber textile manufacturer. Her boss pretty much gave her free reign in collecting props and costumes for photo shoots. This would lead to her designing her own custom pieces when she couldn't find appropriate costumes for a particular look that she had in mind. By 1969, Kawakubo was selling her own designs under the CDG label in shops in Tokyo. In 1973, she opened her first store, and within the decade, she had 150 shops across Japan and was earning $30 million annually. Throughout the 80s and 90s, Comme des Garçons gained international acclaim for its bold, unconventional use of materials. CDG always made it a point to collab with creators of the day. Artists, architects, musicians, they even had a partnership with Jean-Michel Basquiat back in the 80s. Ray ran through a phase where her inspiration led her to design pieces that were not typically shaped and had protrusions from what some would consider odd angles. Her pieces were considered too avant-garde for runway and some thought that they were unflattering to the female form. Comme des Garçons started out with just women's clothes only. But over time, they would include a men's line as well. By the time the 2000s had rolled around, Ray and Comme des Garçons had experienced years of success in the fashion industry. And as this new thing known as streetwear began to blossom, it opened up doors of new opportunities for everyone, including Ray. And in 2002, they launched Comme des Garçons Play, marking their entry into the streetwear market. This was a bit of a departure from the same avant-garde looks, a venture into a more approachable aesthetic, yet all while maintaining the brand's signature creativity. CDG Play managed to infuse high fashion with a sense of youthful energy. It blurred the lines between casual wear and luxury, creating a new paradigm in the fashion industry. Comme des Garçons Play struck a chord with fashion enthusiasts around the globe. Its iconic heart logo, designed by Polish artist Flip Pagowski, became synonymous with youthful exuberance and contemporary style. Which brings us to the introduction of Dover Street Market. In 2004, Ray and her husband and business partner, Adrian Jaffe, were originally inspired by the now demolished Kensington Market. Wanting to recreate a large, random and spontaneous assortment of clothing and random tidbits, they knew that they would be selling Comme des Garçons and other brands, so with this in mind, they named the store after the location in which it was situated, Dover Street in London. Kawakubo and Jaffe threw out the rule book that dictated how luxury stores should look, and with the totalitarian homogeneity that turned up its nose at a more aesthetic approach. But things didn't take off like a rocket once they opened though. It would take a few years before people finally got a grip on what it was that they were trying to do. But over time, shoppers and industry vets alike began to recognize the brilliant harmony and the way that artistic expression and commercial potential coexisted under one roof. After experiencing success in London, Dover Street Market packed up its bags and headed to several different countries for new openings globally. 
With a heavy focus on Asia, considering Comme des Garçons' Japanese roots, the first international location in 2012 also happens to be Kawakubo's hometown of Tokyo, in the district of Ginza. Dover Street Market is an interesting mix of all the ingredients that have come to define the culture. They carry brands ranging from Gucci and Prada to Stussy and Palace. But Dover Street Market is way more than just a clothing store though. They've often been credited with being the first concept store, reimagining what a physical shop can actually look like. Merging together high fashion and streetwear with art installation, they even shut down twice a year to redesign the space ahead of the new season. It's this approach that prompted Ray to describe their thing as, quote, beautiful chaos. One of the most remarkable elements of Dover Street Market is the market mentality. The way that brands come together on the one roof with nothing distinguishing the newly stocked emerging designers from that of fashion's most established names. After almost 40 years in fashion, Rei Kawakubo has become an icon in her own right. These days, she's involved in the visual aspects of it more than a day-to-day -day level, directing the aesthetics and creative point of view of the stores. But her legacy in the industry is one that I believe will live on long after she's no longer with us. She often gets overlooked in the discussion of how streetwear evolved in the West. But as I pointed out earlier, she's much more than simply a designer of streetwear. In many ways, Ray could be looked at as the grandmother of modern fashion. But what do you think? Hit us up in the comments section and let us know. Now. For a bit more on us at TakeFlight214.com, we're a collection of artists creating pop culture related pieces for apparel and home decor. We've been in business over 15 years providing quality artwork and great customer service. And rather than ask you guys donate money to me for nothing in return, I'd rather you head over to the site and see if it's something that you like. We also do custom one of one pieces. The link is in the description. All right now guys, if you made it all the way to the end, then I thank you greatly. Please don't forget to smash that like button for me on the way out the door. Liking and sharing these videos is the best way to help our channel to continue to grow. And if you want to be updated every time we drop a new video, then hit the subscribe button and then the notification bell. That way you'll be dinged each time a new episode drops. But with that being said, I'm Nate the Great from TakeFlight214.com signing out. Until next time, peace.